Let's talk about hop and pops. So this jump type is one that every skydiver needs to know, learn and experiment in their formation. So in this video, I want to demystify the hop and pops. What's up Skydivers? It's Catherine Bernier from Skydive Vibes, sharing the passion of skydiving and helping you become better and safer skydivers. So if you're new here, consider subscribing and click the little bell icon to be notified whenever we post new videos all about skydiving. So this video was inspired from an article on Skydive Mag written by Pete Allum from Flight One. So you'll find the link of that article down in the description below to get a lot more information, but in this video I wanted to give you an overview and give you some pointers on how not to be so much afraid of doing your hop and pops, but also when do you actually use them, and I'd like to encourage you to do more of those. Let's start. So what are hop and pops? They are a type of jump where you are exiting the plane at a lower altitude of around 5,000 feet. Needless to say that those are a source of a lot of stress for newer skydivers because at first we are used to jump at a, an altitude of 14,000 feet and we're opening at around 5,000 feet. So when we are told to jump out of the plane at 5,000 feet, we're wondering how will we have time to make sure we are stable and pull our canopy at the right altitude. So I totally get that, it's totally normal, but I want to spend some time to explain to you why in fact you might have more time doing a hop and pop than you think. And this starts with science. So the perception of not having enough time comes from the fact that we're way lower compared to the ground than when we are at 14,000 feet. But the fact is that when you're exiting the plane at 5,000 feet, you're starting your descent at a speed of zero compared to when you are reaching 5,000 feet when you did jump from 14,000 feet. When you reach that 5,000 feet in a normal jump, you are actually at terminal velocity. So this means that when you're exiting the plane at 5,000 feet, in five seconds, you would have traveled around 400 meters compared to when you are at your final velocity at 5,000 feet, well, in five seconds, you'll be a thousand feet below. So in fact, you actually have more time when you're exiting the plane at 5,000 feet before reaching your opening altitude than when you hit that 5,000 feet during a normal jump until you reach your opening altitude. So you have more time to get out of the plane stabilize and then take the time to pull. So that's the facts. But experience proves it all. Once you will actually do your own 5,000 feet jump, you'll realize by yourself that I actually have way enough time to get out, stabilize, open, and even you might be able to maybe wait a couple of seconds before actually initiating your deployment. That's what I figured out when I tried it. I was stressed out so much, exit the plane, and then, oh, okay, I'm already ready to pull, but it's not my opening altitude yet. Interesting. <laughs> so make your experience. When it's time to do your hop and pop or emergency jump in your progression, do it, go out for it, and you'll see by yourself that you have enough time. And it's all backed out by science, as I explained. So now, when and why would you want to do hop and pops? There are five reasons that I want to share with you. The first one is during your AFF, of course. That's a prerequisite to get your solo license to experience your first hop and pop. Doing an emergency jump. If something goes wrong with the plane, you might have to exit the plane at a lower altitude than expected. So being trained to do so could save your life. Number three for a canopy piloting course or to exercise yourself under canopy. Those are great for that. Number four, if you go up for a normal jump and then there's this cloud ceiling happening where you cannot jump above it, you might end up having to take a decision between going down with the plane 
or jump at a lower altitude, maybe seven, eight thousand feet. So you've made all the ride up to there. So why not jump anyways? <laughs> and number five, the fifth reason why you would want to do a hop and pop is during demo jumps. So those are usually done at a lower altitude due to different variables because you're not jumping at a drop zone. So you'll have to do a hop and pop during your AFF, like I said, and this is to train you to do an emergency exit if you ever encounter one. So when it's time for you to do it, I know it's stressful, we talked about that earlier. Breathe, stay calm, trust the science, and experience your own hop and pop and realize that you have plenty of time to exit the plane stable and do what you have to do before opening. The second reason was for an emergency jump and you might already know about it but at first when we take off with the plane we are supposed to be attached to the plane up to an altitude of 1500 feet. This is made so because below that if something were to happen with the plane, you actually don't have time to exit the plane and deploy your canopy safely. So for that matter, you have better chances to stay alive by staying in the plane. But over that, you know, you are unbuckling yourself from the plane. So at that point, if something happens, you will have to get out of the plane. So knowing how to exit the plane stable and pull our canopy faster than usual is something that could really save your life. So between 1,500 feet and 2,500 feet, you will exit the plane and deploy your reserve canopy right away. For that, you don't have to cut your main and open your reserve. Although if you do, that's not a problem. In an emergency situation, things can be quick, but you could actually exit the plane with your hand ready on your reserve handle and pull it right away if you are between 1,500 and 2,500. Above 2,500 up to whatever, you can deploy your main canopy. In that type of situations, things can go very fast. So if you end up exiting and having trouble to stabilize yourself, pull. That's the number one rule that you have to do. And actually I've learned a rule whenever it's time for you to deploy your canopy and it goes by rank of importance. So number one, pull. Number two, pull at the right altitude. And number three, pull stable. So first of all, you want to prioritize having a canopy above your head, of course. The second point, you want to prioritize your altitude over the stability. So let's say you are at the right altitude to pull and you're not yet stable, pull anyways. And if you can make sure you're stable at the right altitude and it's time for you to pull, well, it's the best scenario to pull. So the first two reasons why you would do a hop and pop are not your choice. You have to do them. So in your formation and if something bad is happening with the plane, you have to do it. But the next three are reasons that you choose to actually do a hop and pop. The first one we discussed about is uh, doing a canopy course. So this is very important in my own opinion that you guys experience a canopy course. Why? To improve yourself under canopy, to correct some of the mistakes and bad habits that you might already have and to prepare yourself to actually downsize. And I couldn't recommend enough Flight One. This is a course that I've taken myself and that I would recommend to anyone, but I know there's a lot of different canopy courses out there and canopy coaches that might be offering courses on your drop zone, so leverage them. The next one was having low clouds. So that speaks for itself if you have a cloud ceiling because we're not supposed to jump unless we can properly see our landing area. Did you know that? So if you cannot see your landing area, you actually cannot jump above a cloud. Your pilot may choose to actually go at a lower altitude right at the base of the clouds and still allow you to jump. So let's say it's around seven to 8,000 feet. You can still enjoy a good free fall. And of course, you'll have the opportunity to practice your canopy skills. So why not? You're already there in the plane. Of course, I would recommend you to jump, but if you don't want, you can still go down with the plane. And actually, I remember one time there was clouds and actually rain starting to come out and we decided to still jump. We were at around 7000 feet and we went out and jumped anyways and we landed with the rain. So that was an interesting experience.
The last one was the demo jumps. That type of jump is only accessible to skydivers that have a C license and have taken the demo jump rating. If you want to have more information on the skydiving licenses and what they give you access to, you can watch this video right here. Next point that I wanted to discuss with you is how to perform a good hop and pop. So of course the first thing is to choose your skydiving exit. And the first one you might think about are the ones that you're learning in your AFF progression, which are for example the student exit, either standing or sitting the floating exit, there's the dive exit as well. And if you're confident and have a little bit more experience, any type of exit will work as long as you become stable before opening during that hop and pop. But keep in mind that if you're exiting facing the relative wind, the blast, make sure to arch, present your hips to the blast and everything should go smoothly. And if you're diving, make sure to extend your arms and fold your knees. By the way, I'm preparing a great video on how to exit stable every time, something that clicked in my mind that I want to share with you. So if you don't want to miss this one, make sure to subscribe. Next, one thing to consider if you're more than one actually doing a hop and pop on your jump run, you want to consider the wing loading of each and every one of you. Why? Because as you'll be exiting the plane and trying to space yourself in the sky, you don't want to end up being at the same level in your landing pattern. So for that matter, by letting the highest wing loading go first, they will descend faster under canopy and so they will tend to land first. As you're exiting, you will spread yourself in the sky and make sure there's not much traffic in your landing pattern. Considering that as well, you want to make sure to respect the level you are at, don't go ahead and spiral like crazy and end up being underneath that higher wing loading because then you'll mess up the order and you might end up with a lot more traffic during your landing. How long should you delay before pulling when you exit the plane? That's an interesting question. And actually what you simply want to do is make sure that you're away from the relative wind and that you have enough speed so that your canopy can deploy at a normal rate. So it's funny to say, but if you're pulling faster, you'll end up deploying your canopy slower. It will take more time to deploy your canopy. Why? Because of the relative wind and your speed. To explain that, when you are deploying your main canopy, you are actually throwing your extractor and that smaller pilot chute is extracting the rest of your canopy, your deployment bag and then the main canopy. So if you don't have enough wind or if the wind is the relative wind, which is still not as fast as when you are falling, well, it will take more time for the pilot chute to gain enough strength to pull on your system. So by waiting slightly more, let's say three to five seconds, you'll then have a more normal deployment of your main canopy. If you end up pulling and feeling that it's taking a little bit longer than usual, do not stress out, simply look over your shoulder, try to see what's happening, but most likely you might still be in the blast of the plane, in the relative wind of the plane. So simply let it a couple more seconds to be able to deploy your canopy. If something is wrong though, you might want to do your emergency procedures. Now in the comment section below, let me know, do you like doing hop and pops and what is your favorite skydiving exit? Hope you've liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and consider watching those other videos from Skydive Vibes. On that, keep jumping, stay safe and blue skies. Let's do this. Actually, fun fact, do you know that I have a black belt in karate? <laughs>